Cole Hamilton here with Hamilton Native Outpost and we get a lot of questions about what is a good seabed and how does it look. So we're going to go over that here today and some techniques to achieve that which are burning, raking, dragging, and drilling. So to get this field to this point we've done a full conversion on it and we're now ready to plant our crop that we're going to plant in this field which will be a native grass that's here in the spring. This is about an ideal seed bed. You've got a little bit of bare ground here. You've got some thatch here. Our soil's not in a real erosive condition. We still have ground cover on it and we don't have so much that we can't deal with that ground cover. So as far as this seed bed here, it would be really good for either drilling or for broadcast. So let's talk drill first. There's a little bit of thatch here on the ground and that would be fine. You're, there's not enough to keep your drill and not get seed soil contact. It'll cut right through it. Be careful not to go too deep. You're better off with your seed in the groove on top of that thatch than you are a half inch deep down the ground. You, a lot of people plant too deep with a drill. It's just too easy to get too much coverage. So for larger projects such as a field of planting or even monoculture where we're going to do broadcast seeding, a lot of times we use a Vicon seeder and at the same time we're using a Vicon seeder on a tractor, we chain a seeder tree on behind that Vicon seeder and drag it at the same time as we're doing our broadcast seeding. It does virtually the same thing the rake does just by raking the ground as you go gives it that light disturbance out of the, after your seed falls on the ground to get that uh, fall on down to mineral soil where it will germinate um, you really really works well uh, cedar trees here in the ozarks are cheap we've had pretty good success using elm trees blackjack oak trees uh, depending on where you live may you need to use hickory trees uh, a har or a drag will work as well. Um, some of those are way more aggressive than others so you just kind of got to see what you have available to you and try not to cover your seed too deep. If you're afraid that you're going to drag and cover your seed too deep it is fine to do your dragging before you broadcast your seed. With a cedar tree or the, the trees that I mentioned you won't get your seed too deep by dragging it unless you're really muddy or something like that. So a lot of times we do it at the same time. It's also a good way to mark where you've been in the field if you don't have GPS or some other way to see your tracks. So if we was gonna broadcast seed this patch here, uh, say a flower bed, a landscaping project, yard around the house, something of that nature, we would probably use smaller tools than we would a big field but we try to accomplish the same thing. We're needing to break up the thicker areas of thatch just a little bit, not a lot. We don't want it gone, it helps us hold our soil. So we wanna keep it, we, I wouldn't really recommend you disc that under, some people do. I find it to be an erosive method to go about it. I'd rather have it, just disturb it a little bit so that the seeds get to the soil. My tool of choice for doing the small projects would be a wire tined rake, same ones we use for burning. And we don't have to get aggressive here. Uh, we just barely scratch the ground like that. And you can see how we're moving that around. So you broadcast your seed on first and then just start to rake the ground a little bit where you put the seed and the seed will naturally being smaller, heavier, it'll want to go down to the ground. The little bit of mulch that you rake around that covers it up that's not going to be a problem. We don't have that much mulch here and it'll actually help hold water and moisture down against your seeds. So that's what I would do on a small scale for landscaping. Some situations you might encounter is more thatch on your field than what uh, we have here today. Maybe your annual weeds grew really well. Maybe um, you've got some tree leaves that have blowed out into your field. Um, and you, maybe you just don't have a mechanical way to do a drag and it's too big of a patch to use your rake on the whole thing. So the big thing is to get seed to soil contact. So a method we use a lot is to burn off a lot, some of that thatch. You don't need to burn it all off. We don't need bare ground. 
But if you can get it down to where you can see the ground about half the time, that would probably be satisfactory. Another example of where you might need to do burning, let's say you're doing a woodland planting, either around a house or in a, out in a big field or out in a big timber where you're doing a savanna restoration. Yeah, a lot of times there's stumps, there's trees, you can't get equipment in there to drag. And a lot of those are hand planting or aerial seeded if you will burn ahead to remove those single mat of leaves that are on the ground um, that will help you get good seed soil contact. Some sort of disturbance like that uh, helps a lot in germination of your seeds. But this is an example of a not very well prepared seed bed here. And what we have is not a problem with too much thatch on the ground. We could drag that and easily cover it up. But when you look, we've got these green plants here and they're kind of yellowed and burned back from frost. But uh, we would want to round up this uh, to kill those out before we planted because these, while they're not very big now and even there's even little seedlings in here that are way smaller, as they grow, they're always going to be ahead of your plants. They've got a head start. We haven't planted this field yet. So your seedlings that you want to grow and develop got to compete with somebody, with another plant that's got a head start on them for the year. And they'll remain bigger all year long. If you can start things on a more equal basis uh, where you don't have the seedlings already germinated, that is a much better prepared seed bed. If you look out across here at this situation, we're not intending to plant this field. But if we was, when we was to spray that, we would have way too much thatch. Uh, we would kill all that, it would turn brown. But we would need to remove that either through burning or a lot of dragging. You might need to drag that two or three times to break that fibers of that plant up. <laughs>